You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nery here from Drakewing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir Lee's Path. So let's go ahead and jump right back in after the group had spotted that strange figure out in the courtyard. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. Let me entertain you and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, calm down. I don't even know if he was able to see me, and even if he did want to hurt us, this place is like a maze. The odds of him finding us before we move on is pretty rare. Regardless, I don't want to hang around here any longer, and I run off to catch up to the others. I need to get as much distance from that courtyard as possible. They're only walking a couple feet ahead of me, but that distance feels much too long. Guys? But I'm not able to get, but I'm not able to get the words out as I run right into Oscar's arm, smushing my nose against his bicep. I know I shouldn't be surprised it felt like a brick wall, but I feel like a person shouldn't be this hard. Oh, sorry, little dude. You okay? Y yeah, did we... St why did we stop? I don't know. We only just stopped when she saw something. I'm about to say more, whether that's about the figure I saw or just intriguing... Or just intriguing more about what's happening. I don't know, but I'm just... But I'm not... I don't know, but I'm not able to get another word out before it leaves on the two of us. Shit, you okay? Is your nose bleeding again? Again? Not now. Go with them. Let me check up on Wallace. He's fine, man. Billy just gives Oscar a glare dark enough that he gives in and the otter walks over to the others, both of which are crowding around a door for some reason. Lee literally grabs my attention away and inspects my face, tilting my head around to make sure there actually wasn't any damage as if the two of us would lie to him about that. I know he's just caring about me, and I do appreciate the concern, but this is a little too much. I'm not some fragile glass sculpture that'll shatter within it with any impact. I can't tell him that. Uh, he, he's only wanting to help. Not that it would do much good anyway. Lee's surprisingly stubborn when it comes to taking care of others. It's probably best to just let him see for himself. After what feels like five minutes of inspecting, though, I'm sure it barely reached 30 seconds, he reluctantly pulls away. He doesn't look worried anymore, but he still seems unsatisfied. I told you, I'm fine. It was barely a bump. Right. Everything looks fine. I did say that the treatment felt demeaning, but with how dejected he looks, it makes me want to hug him and try to convince him that it's not his fault. But I just settle for reaching out and bumping his arm, trying to knock him out of his gloom. Hey, I'm okay. You don't gotta worry about me so much. It's not much, but the way that Lee's clenched jaw relaxes feels like everything. It's barely noticeable, but on his face, it's barely noticeable, but on his face, when that rarely shows much when he's not smiling, it makes all the difference in the world. I have to. Kids like you are always getting into trouble. I'm not a kid. Are you comparing me to your sister again? No, she can take care of herself if she gets in trouble. She's a brat, but she's a tough brat. You're not like that. People take advantage and hurt people like you. There's no way for me to confirm this, and Lee makes no indication that he's implying this either, but I feel like he's talking about Oscar. But, unable, but I'm not able to get an, answer, get an answer from him as he puts an arm around my back and pushes me towards the other, the others. Pushing me towards the others. The conversation clearly over. Not that I mind too much. I want to get out of here as soon as possible. Everyone's gathering around Lily, who inspe who's inspecting a door. She looks. She's looking more serious than I've ever seen her before. There's a determination to the way she's scanning the door and a little bit of an anxiety in her shaky breath. I've seen her like this before, and from the way Lee's looking too, he's just as confused as me. Looks like whatever they found, it didn't happen. It didn't happen until after she came, after he came over to check up on me. What's going on? There's something off about this door. It's well-maintained, and there's even fresh flowers attached to the front. Look! She wasn't kidding. The door looks to be in pristine condition. Outside of the area where I reunited with Lee, most of the hospital has been in only a moderate state of disre disrepair, but there's barely any sign of age. Inside of a small door-mounted vase, there's, a blue f there's blue flowers sitting inside. I immediately recognize them as forget-me-nots, but they look like they've been just picked today. Looks like a memorial. Not that Lee mentions that it really does. I haven't visited people in hospital often, but I think people leave flowers on doors. They'd usually put them up with whoever's inside, right? Was the person I saw in the courtyard the person maintaining this? But maybe he thought we were trespassing. I mean, we literally are, but it wasn't intentional. Who cares if it's a memorial? Let's just get out of here. Maybe there's something in here. I really want to look inside. There's something to the way Lily's saying this that doesn't make it sound like simple curiosity. She sounds confused, more so than a simple well-kept door should make someone. It couldn't hurt, right? It'll just take a moment. Yeah, okay, just take a peek. I really want to protest, but there's something to the way she's staring at the plaque on the door. 
listing the room number as 149 that makes her look mournful for something that might be hidden on the other side of the door. Besides her, there's also something eating away at the back of my brain, like little voices whispering thoughts directly into my head. It feels like it feels like going inside this room is the correct thing to do. Everyone else looks like they're thinking the same, even Lee and Lucas, who looks like they want to leave the door alone. Who, who even looks who even looked who even who look like they want to who look like they want to leave the door alone don't seem to be protesting anymore. It looks like we collectively agree that this is the right thing to do. As she touches the handle, it feels like a spike of anxiety goes through my spine and up into my brain. It takes all my willpower to not take a step back or hide it behind someone. It's like I can feel electricity tingling my fingertips. Despite everything, though, I feel more at peace than I felt since we arrived in this place, and maybe even a little bit, maybe even a little before at the library. Something about being with everyone else makes me f makes everything feel more manageable. I wonder if the others feel that too. And then, without any more hesitation, she yanks down the handle and shoves the door inside. But I'm not able to see inside as my vision is filled with only white, like a supernova is happening in front of my eyes. Oh. My eyes open with a surprising amount of struggle, and I can feel a searing headache burning inside my skull. It makes my entire head feel heavy with exhaustion. Everything comes back into focus, and we're back in the library, sitting at the same table, same table as we were just before whatever was happened. What? Did I have another nightmare again? Oh, when did I fall asleep? Is it because I read the diary again? Most of our group is also sitting around the table, looking just as spaced out as I do. The only outlier is Lucas, who's back to sitting at the computer, trying to adjust his cheek fur from what looks like hours pressed against keys. It's like everyone's waking up from a nap, not just me. There's no way that's a coincidence. It can't be. Did all that really happen? I doubt it. These voices are surprisingly unperturbed. It's as if this entire thing doesn't phase him in the slightest. How are you so calm? Did we really just go to that hospital? Calm down. It was probably just a dream we all had. Things have been getting to people lately. I'm sure it's fine. We all just happened to share a dream? I feel like I'm going crazy here, but... Let me see. Good music. I feel like I'm going crazy here, but Lee just shrugs like everything just makes sense. As soon as we woke up here... Let me... Just a little bit. As soon as we woke up here, he just assumed nothing weird happened, but surely something did. Didn't it? I don't think it was a dream. I know some guys hit some stuff in the, in the corners of this place, and there are no cameras down the ends of the aisles, so plenty of guys think it's better to do stuff here than get caught at their dorms. We probably ended up whiffing some of that some of that tripping balls. I know my roommate got high here once because some guy across the shelf from him was hitting some shit. That sounded more likely than us happening to share a dream, but what are the odds of that happening? Plus, the whole thing just felt so real and... So similar to that dream I had in the classroom on Wednesday... Both of them took me to this insane, twisted world. What if it wasn't a coincidence? But how do we all hallucinate or dream the same thing? We probably just influenced each other. Even if we, even if we weren't drugged, someone muttering in their sleep might affect the rest of might affect the rest of us who were sleeping as well. Lucas doesn't sound as confident as the rest of them, but I doubt he believes something truly strange happened. He looks more like he's trying to figure out a puzzle at the back of a newspaper. Lily, for her part, doesn't add in, doesn't add to any theory at all. She looks more concerned about going through her phone. I don't think she's even listening to us. But that simple theory reminds me of an incident when I was younger. I had been nine or ten, and I had just had a bad nightmare. Marcus was sleeping with me and mentioned and mentioned that I mutter when I'm having a nightmare. It was how he always knew when to wake me up. Maybe I had another nightmare from reading this, and it gave it gave it to everyone else. Hell, if Oscar's right, maybe they'd been somewhat awake and talked back to me too, feeding this whole thing. This whole situation sounds insane. It. I think that's enough. What's stressing? What's stressing over it going to do? Wallace, you're looking pretty messed up. I think we should call. Ho we should all head home and take care of ourselves. My phone's telling me it's past five, so it's getting late. But, hey, whether it was a nightmare or hallucination, or even if it was just a mass hysteria, just a fit of mass hysteria, we have no real way of knowing. It's best not to get too hung up on it, right? And despite all the protesting I want to do, she's right. This was likely just a fluke, and the odds of us ever finding out what happened are next to nothing. We'd just be leading a wild goose chase. Let's just go home and chill for the night. No more reading the diary, though, okay? It'll, I'll take it with me if I have to. I won't, I promise. Good. Do you think someone could stay with you, or stay with someone else? I don't really want anyone else... Uh, blah. I don't really want anyone alone tonight. Does everyone else have someone at home? We all look at each other, waiting for someone else to go first. The easiest and most obvious answer decides to take initiative and speak first. 
I have my sister at home. I wouldn't worry about me, but I got her. Hey, man, don't think, don't think you big guy, don't think you big, don't think you big tough guy thing means you can't, means things can't get you, too. Lee raises an eyebrow at Oscar, and perhaps for the first time that I can remember at this moment, he gives him a direct smile. Thanks. What about you? Got a roommate? Yeah, he's a bit of a pothead, but he's chill. He's actually not here often, but the whole frat is pretty lively. How pleasant. The constant noise of delinquents partying sounds like a worse hell than we were just in. Now that we're out of whatever we were and back in the normal everyday library, Lucas is looking much better. In fact, the only ones that still look shaken at all are Lily and me. She's faring a lot better than I am. I wonder if she's worried about me so much. I must look like a mess. I got my roommate. He doesn't have theater club today, so he'll already be home tonight. He doesn't go out on Thursdays. And he's, and he's a theater boy? Yeah, he, he just keeps getting more and more interesting. He's actually a dancer. He's part of a dance club, too, and tends to perform dance routines for musicals. God damn, sign me up! Everyone ignores Oscar after that, not that he looks too surprised. I can imagine he's going to poke Lucas about his numbers later, his number later. I can just tell. Hopefully if they do something, Lucas isn't home to catch them. Looks like everyone's got someone to be with. That's good. And my dad's gonna be home tonight, so I'm fine. All that's left is Wallace, and after two days like that, I don't want him alone. Wallace can stay at my place. He's already met my sister, and he's been and he's been badgering me to bring him over. She's been badgering me to bring him over. Now that's a thought. After everything we've gone through today, or didn't go through, I suppose, having a nice time at Lee's place sounds like a welcome break. I wouldn't mind seeing Charlie again. She was definitely she was definitely an interesting person. I believe, and I believe him when he says that she's excited to see me. She's got a lot of energy. That sounds lovely. Is that all right with you, Wallace? Yeah, that sounds great. I think I'd like the company. She smiles, and just like that, everyone packs up to leave. It's unceremonious, but that makes sense. It was just a normal day at the end of things. But I can't shake this nagging feeling that there's more to that dream than just a simple nightmare or hallucination. It just felt a little too specific. There's nothing I can do to prove it, though. Lily's right, after all. Even if there was something weird going on, it's not like I can do anything about it. Resigned, I lift myself off the chair, and I'm ready to head off to my... Head off to my hopefully calm night. Or oh, knowing some of my company, it might not be so calm. But before I can follow everyone down the aisle toward the entrance, I'm stopped by a hand on my shoulder. It's Lily, and her expression is hard to read, closer to a mixture of uncertainty and worry more than any single emotion. Hey, do you think we could meet up tomorrow? Oh, sure. What do you need? Just want to have a chat. Think you can meet me at the hospital? It's definitely a strange place to want to go, especially after what just happened today. But there's a look in her eyes that makes this feel important, at least to her. I mean, yeah, we were planning on looking into some stuff tomorrow, but we can do that before then. I don't think I have any classes tomorrow. Great, I'll catch you then. Have a good night, okay? I gotta get home before Dad begins to worry. And just like that, she skips off towards the door. Sorry, guys, I think the cats are probably fighting. And just like that, she skips off towards the door. There's a spring in her step, but it feels a little forced. I guess even she's still feeling what happened today. It's an easy it's an easy thing to forget, I suppose. I didn't even get to get a time for when we're meeting up. I'll have to ask for her I'll have to ask her later. Ah, oh, okay, we've reached the end of the build. Alrighty. Here it ends. Upcoming months. Let's go ahead and pause it right here. Alright, guys. Let's see, is there anything else? Next few builds will be focused on Lucas, and he's currently the only route that goes past this point. Okay. Here goes a try, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, don't worry, follow on Twitter for updates if you want to support us. Yes, 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 I love this game. Guys, go support this game, it's amazing. Like, seriously amazing. Okay, so, all right. Um, to catch you guys up, I am going, I am, uh, I just got accepted, uh, yesterday. You'll be watching this the day after I got accepted. My business was formally, let's see, oh, sorry. okay, so my business was officially formed yesterday. I got the seal of certification and everything. I'm very happy. Drake Queen Gaming LLC is now a thing. This is my company. This is this is my my baby. I'm gonna build it up. I'm gonna expand it further. I'm gonna take this channel far beyond what it currently is, guys. Um, just lots and lots of more content coming to you. Years and years of years of entertainment, hopefully. Um, yeah, guys, I'm excited about this new venture. I'm eager to see where it goes. Drake Queen Gaming, the channel, is going to be changing, but it's going to be changing in good ways, guys. Nothing ever stays the same forever. And don't worry, I'm always going to be covering furry visual novels, so don't worry about that. More is coming. 
But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!